Good morning. You're probably wondering why there's someone on stage here talking about spreadsheets, because you're here to learn about BI, about big data, about Hadoop. So why on earth is there someone talking about spreadsheets? Well, 95% of all US companies still use spreadsheets for financial reporting. So that's like almost all companies are still doing this. So if you are still doing this, don't be ashamed, so is everyone else. And those spreadsheets, they're used to base decisions on, we have found in our research. 50% of spreadsheets that are around in a company are used to base decisions on. So these are things like, I'm looking at my sales data and I wonder, am I selling enough blue cars in France? And if I'm not selling enough blue cars in France, I will do something. I will not buy blue paint anymore, or I will start a marketing campaign. Blue is the new black. I will act upon the data in my spreadsheets. But those spreadsheets, they tend to live a little bit under the radar. This is my, why my talk is called that spreadsheets are the dark matter of IT. This is because no one really knows where they are and whose they are and what they do. When I started this line of research, I worked with a Dutch investment bank and I was invited there to do research by the head of their Excel team. So on my first day that I started to do research there, I went to this, uh, the head of the Excel team and I asked him, good morning, I'm here to do some research. Can I have a list of all your spreadsheets? <laughs> so I was just out of school, a little bit naive maybe. So he said, we don't have a list of spreadsheets. There's no such thing as a list of all our spreadsheets. You know, there's Harry in finance and Ben in accounting. He might have some, I don't know. But he said, I guess, we will have a lot of spreadsheets. I think we have about 10,000 of them. So I was like, oh my God, this is a research gold mine. 10,000 spreadsheets, that would be awesome. So I set out a plan to find these spreadsheets. I went to the system administrator and on one of their machines with root access, I typed in Windows Explorer star.xls. So this was my first scan. Within a second, we already found 10,000 spreadsheets. Within an hour, it was still finding more and more, but we had already found one million spreadsheets. So I went back up to the head of the Excel team. I said, you know, sit down. You might have a little bit more than 10,000 spreadsheets. And in the end, it turned out that they had two and a half million spreadsheets. And this is a one and a half thousand employee company. So that's a lot of spreadsheets. And those spreadsheets, why are there so many? Well, one of the reasons for this is that they tend to have a very long lifespan. They stay alive for an average of five years. So this is typically longer than the person who has created it will stay at this position in the company. If I create a spreadsheet today, in five years, I might be working in a different team, even within a different company, but my spreadsheet is still there. And during its lifespan, a spreadsheet is used by 12 people on average. So, and this use typically is something like, I build a spreadsheet and then the guy sitting next to me says, hey, that's a nice spreadsheet, can I have that? And I'm, I say, okay, sure, here you have it. So now there's two. And then I send it to a colleague, he enters some data. The next guy sends it to another colleague, he enters some data, he finds an error, he changes the spreadsheet a little bit. And in this way, all those spreadsheets are created. Different variations, different people working on them for a very long time. And it gets worse. Only one third of all spreadsheets that we found in practice have a manual. And we had a very liberal definition of a manual. If, if there was something like, you know, enter your data here, this is then what's calculated, this is what comes out, and you copy paste this into the database, then we said, okay, that's like documentation. At least there's an explanation of what's going on. And even with this broad definition, only one in three spreadsheets have a manual. So you can imagine that this is a situation that will lead to problems. If something is very important, but no one knows what's going on, then this is going to lead to errors. And it does. There's even a European spreadsheet risk interest group 
Newspeak.org, they have a wonderful website where they list spreadsheet horror stories. This is their term, not mine. And they list companies, the organization that have been in the news because of a spreadsheet mess up. And I could spend you know, the rest of this talk listing all those crazy stories, but I will just give you a, a few highlights. Yes, there it is. Last year, here in London, we had the London Olympics, a very you know, international, prestigious organization with a big budget. You would expect that they would have a very sophisticated ticketing system. They don't. They use a spreadsheet to keep track of the tickets they have sold, and they made a tiny mistake in one of those spreadsheets, and this resulted in one of the stadiums being overbooked by 10,000 tickets. So it's not really money lost, but it was really embarrassing, and people had to come back and exchange their tickets for another day because of a spreadsheet. But you can do a lot worse. Here's a university in the US that lost two and a half million dollars because of a typo in a spreadsheet. Apparently, someone hit a zero with their elbow. Oops, two and a half million dollars lost. Here's another one, a Canadian power company lost no less than $24 million because of a copy-paste error in a spreadsheet. Oops. So what can we do about these errors? How can we solve this? This is what my research at Delft University is about. If you look at the problem, when I looked at the problem at least, it reminded me of something. So there's, let me remind you, there's docu no documentation, a lot of errors, these things stay alive for a long time. It reminded me of software. These are exactly the problems we had with software in the 70s and the 80s when we started to realize that those software systems that we built stayed alive for a very long time, longer than we were there to improve them. But if you look at software, Tools have been created to help programmers manage large code bases, manage unknown code bases. If you look at a modern IDE, so this is a program to build programs with, those programs, they have tools embedded in them to help you understand code. They have tools like debugging, testing, analyzing, all tools that help you not so much to write code, but to write good and maintainable, understandable code. If you compare that to a spreadsheet, well, there's a lot of support for writing a spreadsheet. You know, you can add colors and change the fonts and add borders, but there's nothing really in there that helps you understand a spreadsheet. And we found that this was really needed when I interviewed people at that investment bank, and I interviewed a new employee there, and she said, well, when I applied for my job here, I put on my resume, I'm really good with Excel, because I am really good with Excel. So then I was here with, on my first day, and my new manager said, you're good with Excel, aren't you? Yeah, she said, okay, here's a spreadsheet, and you need to fill it out by Friday. Good luck. So she told me, well, the first days I was just, you know, browsing, clicking through the spreadsheet, hoping for some sort of epiphany that I would cer certainly understand how it would work. But then that didn't happen. And then come Friday, here was the manager. How is it going with my spreadsheet? So she admitted to me that she just, you know, filled out the numbers by intuition. And of course, you know, she had some understanding of what was going on. And only after a few months, she really understood how the spreadsheet was working exactly. And this is a common mistake. This is like asking you, are you really good with Microsoft Word? And then you say, yes, I even know how to make a table of contents. And that's like the most complex thing to do in Word. And then I say, okay, so you're really good with Word. Here's a historical novel. Can you copy edit this for me? Knowing words is not going to help you with that. You need experience. You need to have read more historical novels. And in addition to that, you need tools like a dictionary or an encyclopedia. And those tools are really lacking in spreadsheets. So I thought, let's build those tools to help you understand legacy spreadsheets. So what we did is we created a visualization. Here you see an example where rectangles show worksheets and arrows show the data that flows between those worksheets. And the thicker an arrow, the more data is going from the one worksheet to the other. And such visualizations really support spreadsheet users in quickly getting an overview of how their spreadsheet is structured. 
So we tried this tool with businessmen in the wild. We gave them this tool to support them in understanding their spreadsheets. And the interesting thing we found when we started to use this tool in practice is that not all diagrams look the same. Some diagrams look like this, others look like this. So this is one big fat arrow going up and down. Other diagrams look like this. Other diagrams look like this, <laughs> where pink blocks represent external data sources. So this is an external database or an external spreadsheet. And the interesting thing is while we made this tool to help people understand a spreadsheet, people started to use this tool to diagnose their spreadsheets. They would say something like, this is too complex. Without even really knowing or understanding the spreadsheet, they made a visualization and they said, you know, this is crap. Improve this. I'm not going to even look in the spreadsheet. And they also said more detailed things about the visualization. For instance, in a diagram like this, they would say things like, that arrow is too fat. If I compare it to all the other arrows, it's just too fat. Something strange is going on there. So we embedded this intuition into our tool. Our tool now gives suggestions to users on how to improve the structure of their spreadsheet. We say things like, take this block of cells, move it to that worksheet, and then your structure will be better. So again, we tried this tool in practice, and then we found that if people have suggestions at the higher level and they improve the structure of their spreadsheet, still they really like to have support for detailed support for complex formulas. Here you see a formula that's not really optimi optimized because there's a part of the formula that occurs twice. So the same subformula occurs twice. This is not really easy for the eye. So we also added support to improve formulas, not just the structure, but also formulas. And all these tools come together in a tool called Perfect Excel. So the visualization, also the assessment and improvement of the structure and the improvement of individual formulas come together in our tool. And you can try it at our website, infotron.nl slash strata. You can try it for free. So in summary, we at Delft University of Technology, we build tools to improve and understand spreadsheets. But I'd like to send you away with one thought about spreadsheets. What can we learn from their success? Why are spreadsheets still the preferred tool for financial analysts? I like to think that most alternatives to spreadsheets still look like this. You know, doesn't this remind you of a BI dashboard? It's so complex, there's so many things to look at. It's you know, dazzling. And it's not just, I think, about this simplicity. It's not just that BI tools are complex and spreadsheets are easy. It's also about flexibility. If I'm going to take this thing to China tomorrow, I will have to call ground control. I have to make a flight plan. I have to know exactly where I'm going. Otherwise, I cannot take off. So if I compare that to a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet is more like this. You know, there was the old bike that I still have in the shed. I can jump on this bike tomorrow. Well, I can jump on this bike now and go to China. I don't need a plan. China is somewhere to the east. I can bike there. If I hit sea at Dover, I will figure it out then. This is, I think, what's key to spreadsheets, is that it's so easy just to start with an analysis and let the data guide you. I can just, you know, hole in all the sales data and sort it by product, sort it by country, sort it by, you know, the height of the salesperson. I don't care. I can look at the data and let it tell its story to me in freedom, whereas many, many BI tools uh, need me to think about what data set, what query, this restricts my freedom and my conversation I can have with the data. So I think if you're going to be successful in using or selling BI tools, you really need to think about, do my tools offer freedom, freedom to users? And if we don't incorporate that, people will continue to bike to China on crazy-ass spreadsheets. Thank you.